<laughs> Added one thing to the slide. I noticed. Yeah. Guess whose birthday is today? You? No. <laughs> yeah. Glenn Larson, far side. It's, he's, he's 60 today, so I you know, was sitting there this morning surfing the internet and went, hey, I need to add that in. That's like my favorite <laughs> Larson cartoon, uh, which isn't really, you know, apt for that, but it was pretty good. So just just out of curiosity, just for our, our benefit up here, how many of you guys have a background in geology? Eh, not quite as many as I thought. Okay. So... For a brief introduction, I am Randy Hale. I, uh, I'm a GISP, talking about GIS people, you know, being in the, the, the lower percentile. I I'm, work with GIS all the time. I am an ESRI business partner. I work with ARC uh, incessantly. I own my own company, North River Geographic Systems, and I'm also the Georgia Arissa Education Outreach Chair. So I'm like up to my neck in GIS stuff. Uh, so I guess I kind of fall in that other 50% range of the of the GIS people uh, that deal with it. And to my left, I'm Leah Keith Hull. I'm a Hamilton County school teacher. Um, teach geology, astronomy, chemistry, and scientific research. Yeah, and we were in uh, we were actually in school together in, in a geology program way back when, and we were from Chattanooga. So we're just up, yeah, there we go. There's one person that knows where it is. I got a, uh, got a, a frantic email back when all this started from a guy named uh, Harry over in uh, London. Uh, Chattanooga, I've never heard of it. And I fired back a nasty email, well, London, I've never heard of it. <laughs> so, dude, Chattanooga Choo Choo, all that stuff. So we're down here in Atlanta. And we came about 120 miles, drove down. Um, if you look a little bit closer at Chattanooga, uh, Harry was actually berating me. He he lives somewhere over in London, Birmingham, I don't know, uh, England, <laughs> somewhere. And he was berating me because nothing had been done in Chattanooga. He was fixing the interstates. Uh, apparently the interstate system was pretty bad, and I kind of popped up as a user, and he you know, pretty much harangued me, you know, why, why haven't you done anything? I do GIS, I map all day. Well, I want to map when I get home. Uh, so anyway, Chattanooga, we butt up against Tennessee River, and Red Bank... It's a little bit north of town. It's just a little uh, unincorporated area of the city. It's its, its own little entity within Chattanooga. Um, and that's where it is. They got uh, one high school, two, a middle school, and elementary school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not very big. Most of the population works in Chattanooga. I mean, they're, they're you know, fairly self contained. They can do about everything there. So, what, so talking about GIS people and OpenStreetMap, God Almighty. I hated OpenStreetMap. <laughs> I got involved in it and it made absolutely zero sense because I'm used to dealing with points, lines, and polygons and suddenly I've got an XML file with tags and highways or, you know, the highway tag is residential, it's, it's something else and amenities, the fudge or amenities, you know, so it, 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 was, it was painful and, and so I'd heard of OpenStreetMap and so somebody threw a mapping party uh, named Hurricane McEwen at the time in Chattanooga. She was back in town. She's uh, had a house there. I went down to St. John's restaurant, walked in, and I'm like, eh, what is this? You know, what's going on? We bring contact cloud made. They send Thea down to the Georgia Arisa meeting, and kind of everything built from there. And for a while, I kind of resisted it. I would talk about it, but I wouldn't map. So Thanksgiving, I went out and started working in North Chattanooga. Uh, trying to map and trying to understand this, and I have made as many mistakes as I have made contributions, and I'm, I'm still finding them. I live somewhere right over in here. Uh, so I just kind of go out and walk around and map stuff, use aerial photography, and put in points. So, I've, you know, I've done a lot in a very small area right now, and uh, I've probably made numerous mistakes. If you go look at it now, you're going to find even more things I've done wrong. Uh, so, me and Leah were in school together. She calls me up. Come down and talk to the kids about GIS. She has a scientific research class. And eh, I like going and talking to kids. So, we, you know, I go down there. And we're, she actually had a thing on an earthquake simulation. You want to tell them? Uh, we're presently doing data collection with UTC and their SIM center to 
hopefully in the next three years, if we had the big one happen along the New Madrid, how would it affect Chattanooga? Because there's no plan in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> I had to go to Arkansas, so the fellow who works in Arkansas, I had to go to your FEMA site to get a plan. And so uh, the kids and I are starting to do that along with the uh, UTC SIM Center. Yeah, and in the SIM Center, one of the things they did was say, well, bring us GIS data and we can simulate it. And my question was, what are you calling GIS data? And didn't really get a good answer back. And they kind of left it vague. I, it was a longer story, but... Uh, at the time, I was sitting there editing when Leah came by in OpenStreetMap. Uh, I think I was in MapZen sitting there doing it and showed her and said, hey, you know, why don't you get the kids to do this? We'll make our own data. We can put in buildings and points and bridges and all kinds of stuff. They have no GIS at the school whatsoever. They, they do not know the word GIS. There is no GIS program in Hamilton County. I think as close as they have is a CAD program in one of the city schools. So we kind of dove into it and we just saw an open street map and maps in because it was free, it was cheap, and it was quick. It dealt with all my kids who have ADHD along with their teachers, so it worked really well. <laughs> yeah, and these kids, I mean, these kids, you know, I, when we went and talked to them, when I went and talked to them, you know, the first thing I did was break out this very beautiful educational slide of GIS and how maps and points and polygons and they're just going bananas. I mean, they're falling asleep. <laughs> And so then the next class, we just jumped in OpenStreetMap. Hey, do you guys want to make a map? Yeah. You know, well, you can contribute to the map. And we kind of get into it and explain. And, and essentially, my pitch was to seven kids, how well do you know your neighborhood? All these kids live in and around Red Bank. And the argument was, is the O'Reilly's Auto Parts store down the street an O'Reilly or is it an O'Reilly's? Where was the Shoney's at? Where was, where's the Sonic? You know, where, where is all this stuff at? And just kind of quizzing the kids. How many telephone poles do you have on your street? I don't know. What street butts into another street? You know, how do you get here to school? What do you do? Where are the houses at? And just kind of left them with that. You know, how many fire hydrants? What do you know about your neighborhood? And kind of got them, kind of got them stirred up a little bit. And uh, so we started mapping and then... Okay, we started out with school, and Randy started by showing us an overview from Maps In after we got out of the cloud, cloud fog of the school and started doing very uh, simple things, and suddenly the kids were like, oh, this is cool. Um, I said, the next thing you're going to do when we get you logged on is I want you to find your house and map around your house. You know that area, okay? Um, found out that I had to do some things. <laughs> uh, we had to zone it. It's kind of like if you're trying to grade, you've got to know what each kid's doing, even though they've got their eye contacts. So we, we found that zoning um, became very good, so you couldn't go past this area. A lot of kids got very protective. They like doing one certain thing. And boy, I have a young man, every soccer field in Hamilton County is done. <laughs> Why? He plays soccer. Okay? Um, Another young lady was my art person, and she liked green spaces. And boy, howdy, do we have green spaces all over Hamilton County done. Uh, the guy, if you ever get him on this, he's called Fluffy. Uh, it really doesn't really, it's appropriate. But Fluffy likes roads, and nobody messed with the roads. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. the, the, the funny thing was, too, so I was kind of, you know, wondering how is this going to work? Because, you know, kids mapping, you're kind of turning them, I'm turning them loose after an hour's worth of instruction. And with me in charge. W yeah, with, and she hates computers. I mean, she absolutely hates, despises computers and is barely, can I say barely email literate? Well, I use it when okay. I have to. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, you know, so, you know, how is this going to work? Well, as we've discussed in many, you know, various forums, Google kind of changed the game. Kids no Google Earth. Kids know Google Maps. Kids know aerial photography now. So they can look at something and kind of almost get their bearing. So it really, they started going pretty quick. They're making a lot of mistakes, but they're doing things. And, and they're, they're uh, it, it's pretty funny because the, the kid Fluffy, Robert, um, got very irritated because his neighborhood wasn't on the map. He, it just annoyed him to no end. And he sat down there and got his neighborhood on the map, although the librarian was trying to kick him out of the class and, you know, you need to move along, 
he didn't stop till his street was on the map. So the kids. These are my new students. Uh, yeah. I've had them for three days, and, and the guy in the middle is Edwin, and he's looking very excited about going after this. Yeah. Um, we have already started, as I said, this would have been my third day at school, or yes, it would have been my third day at school. And so this was day one, yeah. after I found out their names and tried to remember their names. And as you can see, they're very excited. Um, I was going to put the children are mapping future and we're doomed, but I took that off. <laughs> Because this slideshow is going to get passed around later, so I just I went ahead and removed that. Um, and so here's what they started doing. And I'm kind of, at this point, now my, my editing with OpenStreetMap, like I said, it drove me nuts because it, to me it didn't make a lot of sense at the beginning. So I started off with Potlatch and then jumped up, I think, to Mer, Mer Carter and then jumped back to, to MapZen. And then now, now I'm making sense now so I'm in JOSM now I'm, I'm you know pulling in WMS services and doing a lot of things but they start working around the school so I'm kind of following behind them cleaning up what they're doing uh, adding in buildings uh, there's a hospital next door I added it in they pretty much got the school in after a couple of missteps uh, I went back and fixed the track and the football field and what was also very interesting they, they would tag football you know as a uh, football yeah, essentially attacked it as football, and I guess one of the bots or whatever that runs against OSM came back and said that's not a good tag because football isn't. It's soccer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so clarify. So it's American football. So you know we go back and we fix it, and uh, you know baseball fields, uh, green spaces, uh, kids are putting in parking lots. It's just it's interesting what they're honing in on and what they're picking up on at this point. And the really crazy thing it, it, for me, kind of watching this off the side, because like I said, I'm in there for an hour, I turn them loose, what's going to happen? So the high school is sitting here, and Red Bank actually runs, if I brought a laser pointer, more in this area. It's in between two ridges, guys. Yeah, yeah. And so Red Bank's there, well suddenly, you know, stuff's showing up. There's a neighborhood down here, it's, it's really apartment heavy, and... The whole complex gets put in. Um, you know, and the kids are, this is their neighborhood. The Walmart Supercenter with all the stores starts getting added. Uh, the neighborhood up here starts showing up. And, and, you know, there's another neighborhood starting to turn in. And Okay, my kids, you can tell, please note there were seven and one didn't like doing this. So you might as well say there were six who were doing this. Yeah, there, there's nothing better than giving this presentation and six kids going, hey, this is fun. The seventh one going... This is the stupidest thing you've ever told me to do. And you, it was do? truly embarrassing, but I, I couldn't do anything. You know, they're kids. Yeah. Um, what we found out that is certain kids had certain skills at doing much better. Joe, we ended up letting him do buildings because he is a master at clicking these things and getting through them. As I said, Lacey was my art person, and she loved all the green spaces and learned all the icons real quickly zipping through. Um, Fluffy, I've told you, he really got mad if anybody messed with his roads because if we messed with them, they didn't connect up right and he had to go back and clean up our mess. So uh, we just left that away. Um, the one thing that I would probably change that in England is probably not an issue, but I live in Hamilton County. I live in Chattanooga, which is the Bible Belt and the buckle of the Bible Belt. <laughs> and there are issues of me telling kids or having the icon of a pub, a.k.a. Uh, local watering hole, and having high school students putting it on a map. Um, that means I'm promoting that kind of behavior, which would get me fired. Well, that and they're tagging each other's houses it's, as pubs at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't even go to the many times I had to take off the word brothel that the boys thought was a big fun to do that I had to go back. And yeah. I started just taking points off every time I saw those two things come up. And that usually stopped the problem. Yeah. Because if, you, if you've ever used MapZen, it's very, and I meant to put a screenshot of MapZen in here, but it's very icon driven. So, you know, the kids look, they see, they put stuff in. You put in a point, you click a shopping center, you put it in. And it's very simple. And it was, you know, it was pretty funny because the first thing I thought of when we started doing this, I looked down and the first thing I scanned to was the adult brothel and pub section and went, crap. This is not gonna, you know. We'll see how long it takes them to find this. I it think took less than 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
This is Lacey. This is my little art, uh, artsy child. Lacey is 15 years old. Uh, she is a junior, or last year she was a junior. Uh, this is this year's picture. Um, and uh, if you see green spaces, that was Lacey's work. And this is some of Lacey's work. Yeah, and so so if you go on maps, and this is something else I need to go back and look at. Uh, somebody went in, because you know now kids are tagging, they're adding things. They didn't want any development around the school, so suddenly... Everything green around the school became a nature preserve. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been their teacher's fault, but yeah, we won't and go not, it's not really showing up in OSA, and I'm pretty sure there's a tagging issue. I need to go back and look at it, but but you know, there's green spaces showing up everywhere, and you know, the whole area around the school is now a nature preserve that nobody can touch. So that needs to be go back, you know, need to go back and kind of work on that and, and get that cleaned up. <coughs> But the interesting thing for me is, so like I said, I've turned these kids loose after an hour. Lee is dealing with them. Stuff is appearing all over the place. It's not in Red Bank anymore. They've given up mapping in Red Bank. They're going nuts. This is way outside of Red Bank. This is another high school. Yeah, this is probably five or six miles outside. We played them in football that week. Huh? Yeah, okay. <laughs> played them in football. Unbeknownst to me, I was putting in the baseball fields wrong, and this kid figures out that it's a leisure pitch and then tags the tags it with a, with a baseball thing. And I figured out from whoever put in the, the fields I was doing it wrong. So, you know, this kid goes in, puts in a cemetery, the church, pretty sure he goes to church there, all the buildings running down the main road, the high school, the, the all the stuff, and a random green space over in the, the upper left-hand corner just kind of appears. Um, here's another kid. Now, of these seven kids, four are guys and three are young ladies, which kind of didn't fit with the graph we saw that only 3% are female that are doing the mapping. This is the youngest. This is a sophomore who is 14. A uh, very, very gifted young lady. Uh, she was pretty much my cleanup hitter. If somebody didn't want to do something in, the, in an area, she would clean up the rest of the area and put stuff in. So I called her my cleanup gal. And if you see her, she's peanut, babe. So. Yeah, and, and, and Mab's in, when you log in and you start assigning yourself an ID, you can give yourself any name you want. You know, That's I, not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I kept it RJ Hale 1971 since I was born in 1971. Kids are naming themselves Fluffy. There's some kid that has a very odd name. I think it's after some some Japanese anime character. And then, you know, kids are naming themselves all kinds of crazy things. Uh, this is Michael. He's the guy who named himself after an anime character. Yeah. Michael is one, uh, pretty well my certified genius. And Michael is probably, uh, aside from Fluffy, the one who did the most in uh, this format and is still working. Occasionally I'll still see both those guys up. In the summer, during their free time without a grade attached, yeah. doing this. Yeah. So. While we were taking screenshots, they started development in the uh, south end of Red Bank. Uh, mowing down to the tops of one of the hills or putting in an apartment complex and that appeared in between the screenshots. I was kind of shocked that they were still out there working and if you log into maps and you can actually see the kids randomly appearing as they're working and there's a couple of them still going at it. You know, they don't have to, they just are. Uh, they enjoy it. And so like I said, stuff's appearing way outside. Signal Mountain is way the flip outside Red Bank, and they got the ball field in, they got the school in, they got, you know, random. I told them if they go somewhere to go eat, put it in the map. You know, if you go to Taco Bell, put Taco Bell in. If you go to McDonald's, put it in. So they got to be the joke. Everybody's putting in restaurants. So we probably got in Hamilton County a good chunk of the restaurants done. Uh, the interesting thing about this one, there was a Target Super, uh, super Center that went in there, uh, not represented on the imagery, but the kids know what's there. So they Put a tar you know, put a point in instead of putting the building in. Oh, that's kind of interesting. They were able to kind of equate, and they've got all the the restaurants and stuff. And you know, they're working way outside their graded area at this point. They're just kind of enjoying themselves. And the the yeah. And then the funny thing is, you teach them to map and. <laughs> One of my students who is a senior, I would had a picture of hers, Caitlin. Caitlin's graduated, and she was in our teaching academy. And part of her job was to go teach at uh, Alpine Crest in elementary school, teach fourth graders. And her teacher said, Caitlin, are you ready to do your lesson? And she said, in a minute, it's in my car in the trunk. I'm going to go out. She goes out, pulls out her cell phone, says, Miss Keith, 
Now, I'm in class. I'm on the phone. Yes, Caitlin. I'm in Alpine Crest, and I'm supposed to be with us and playing real quick. Can you come up with something? I said, okay, Caitlin, here's what you're going to do. You've been mapping, right? Okay, we're going to make a draw this on the thing. Have the kid's name. Make them draw the school. Have them put the principal's parking place. He'll like that. Okay? <laughs> More importantly, where the garbage cans are, the bathrooms, and the playground. So that's where it started. Now we have 25 fourth graders with pieces of paper running around their campus, mapping everything, bringing it back to Miss Caitlin, you know, because we're the South. And um, she's bringing it back to the seven of us to put on the map, reading fourth graders. Down. Right. And you, you, know, you can kind of see what the, you know, the fourth graders to them, trees, the recycling bin, the bus stop, and the playground, and they tried for some time to get the parking spot in, apparently there was some kind of hiccup trying to get that done, but, you know, they, they eh, these kids were exposed to, to, to maps, and, and uh, they were able to get it up and, and actually look at it, but well, there was a little hiccup in that, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but, uh, you know, this is kind of interesting, what does a kid, you know, what does a kid map, and trees, recycling bin, and the bus stop. <laughs> so who did what? Um, found a site called, IT, I think it's ITO World, I think. It it's essentially just visualizes what's been done. And you can see there's all kinds of stuff. Hurricanes done some things. And uh, Orocho Kuma, I think that was, I think that was the kid. Um, even Leah did something, <laughs> amazingly enough. <laughs> Well, that's not fair, Randy. Yeah, Every I time I had mine set up to do something, I had to go fix somebody's problem. <laughs> so, you know, so you can see Red Bank, Red Bank's changing. Whoops. Red Bank is changing in here, and things are getting added, and things are changing. It's just an interesting, I was kind of digging around, you know, what is a good, quick way to uh, visualize what the kids are doing, and this kind of shows, you know, what they've been doing, and me kind of jumping around in, in amongst fixing the roads. So, um... Oh. Yeah, and so what gets really interesting when you log into Maps in, uh, most of the development team, uh, I believe, is probably Ukrainian or Russian. I am not sure, and I'm probably butchering that. I'm pretty sure they're Ukrainian. And uh, you, Yulia Iva, I believe, is her name on there, and she will help you if you're in there working. She helps, and she also causes <laughs> problems. <laughs> well, you remember Caitlin and the fourth graders, right? Well, they brought the paperwork and we're desperately trying to get, because fourth graders have less attention span than you and I, we told them 24 hours, their stuff would be on, they could view it, and more importantly the principal could view his parking space. And we're on there, I've already emailed Randy, I've called Randy thinking mm -hmm. that that wasn't fast enough, and we're all trying to fix the problem and we're on the internet and we're emailing the problem to, in my case, I call it the Russian. The librarian comes in and says, what are y'all doing? And I said, oh, we're talking to the Russian. <laughs> that didn't go over very well. No. We actually got a picture on the phone because her next call she walked out of uh, to her office was to my principal, who made a visit yeah. to me. Leah, why are you talking to Russians on school time? <laughs> yeah. With your children. Yeah, and there was enough. You know, there was enough overlap where you, Yulia, Iva would jump in and help. You know, if we had a problem, she would send us a message, and we could text back and forth and and figure out things. And she was very. I mean, she she went above and beyond trying to get this working for the kids. And, and we had hiccups where the kids weren't showing up and things weren't happening. And she on the back end would work and, and several of them, several of the developers uh, over in that area were jumping in and helping and uh, it was it was just very very interesting you know suddenly these kids from Red Bank are getting exposed to you know Ukrainian developers uh, hashing out map issues um, so the problems there were problems oh lordy uh, if we did a lot of work in one area and like I said I'm a GIS person I work with Esri stuff, I'm going to butcher this one. OSM wouldn't update. It seemed like quickly enough it would kind of hang or it would, it would lag. And so in a lot of cases these kids would put something in and most of the time it was a four or five minute turnaround. It was done. In the case of Alpine Crest it hung for two days. Two days. And the, nothing would show up. So I don't, you know. I don't Even know with it. us re-putting it in thinking it was, you yeah. know, thinking that was the problem. And it was just, you know, it was something. I, there's no telling what it was. Um, 
things were slowing down. Either the school was choking, you know, the internet connection out of the school, or something was hanging up because a lot of times, you know, there were, things were slowing down. School computers, good lord, were way out of date. Uh, we first started this. All the school computers were running. running I believe it was Windows 2000, and That's this was still have, yeah. this was in the fall. This was in the spring, uh, well, three four months ago, and uh, had IE6 running on them. And MapZen would not run on IE6, so we had to go get the uh, computer administrator to install Firefox to update, do something to get it going. Uh, MapZen, we tried to log into it. Good God, make it easier. <laughs> yeah, we killed we killed a class day working on this one because. There the was kid, only seven kids. I'm yeah. worried. I've got 30 now. Yeah. The, the, the kids, you know, they need an OSM editing ID, which, you know, you fully understand you need that. But then you need a MapZen ID, and you have to tie the two together. Uh, just get one. <laughs> Do something. Tie them together, because it was, it was uh, you know, painful. And not all the kids, believe it or not, have email at school. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And, uh, you know, we, we, we lost a day just putting in logins, which, you know, now we know. We didn't know at the time. I, when I did it on my own, it was pretty quick, but now you're dealing with seven kids. Now you're going to be dealing with 30 kids. Uh, it's it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Okay, some of our biggest problems and biggest pluses is that Red Bank is a Title I school. If you don't know what a Title I school is, that means 50% of your population is on free and reduced lunch, and they use it. Uh, now that's actually inaccurate because when Randy and I made this PowerPoint two weeks ago, I had not been in school. We are now 57% on free and reduced lunch. So if they can't buy their lunch, they don't have internet and they don't have computers at home. Uh, that's a given. So that means everything that I have to do has to be done in one lab in a, a school of about a thousand students. You know, so you know, so this whole thing of MapZen kind of worked out. It's free, yes. you know, because they're broke. <laughs> so <laughs> it all works. You know, it all works out. A good problem. I walked into school fall of this past year, and my principal said, "You're teaching a new class. It's called scientific research. Here are the state specs. There are no books. You make it up." <laughs> Yay! I'm excited. And by the way, you've got to have lots of technology involved because that was the first spec. I had to have lots of engineering and technology involved. I'm like, yay, again. <laughs> and um, I had no idea that I would have seven students. And I had seven uh, or six of the best students you could possibly have. <laughs> <laughs> I had one who was my charmer. Um, we did lots of things. We spent three weeks on uh, this project. And basically, when we'd get tired of another project, it was like a gift. We're going to go back and do some mapping this day. And they're like, yay! We know how to do that! It's not another one of her crazy ideas. Okay? They did a lot of PR. They talked to their friends and they said, oh, you need to take Miss Key's scientific research class. It's so cool. We mapped. We're on the net. We're live. And now I have 30. <clears throat> And by last count, and of course I was, you know, just there two days ago, um, we have 27 signed up for the spring. Okay? Uh, talked to a lady, uh, had our in-service, we've been in in-service before the kids get here, and happened to mention that I was doing this and actually coming to this presentation because I was kind of nervous because, you know, people do big things. And she grabbed me out of the place I was supposed to be quiet and listening drug me down the hall to the science person over Hamilton County. And now Randy and I are presenting to Hamilton County teachers both in science and social studies uh, in January about uh, open street maps. Yeah, for an hour, so I'm going to babble and wax poetically about maps. <laughs> I'm going to wear them out. Uh, and the kids we have now. And these are some of my new charmers coming in. So do you have a computer for every student? I have two labs for the whole school of a thousand kids, which means I've been there the longest and I'm the meanest teacher, which means I will fight to block out a week and, and say, which one of y'all going to take me on? But I mean, it literally becomes that point, point to get it done. And yeah. as soon as I walk in, 
I block in a week, and it's like this is when we're doing it, ready or not ready, because it's the only time I've got. Yeah, they've got essentially. I, I kind of went through and did a technology inventory, and they've got one really good lab, uh, good, good being relative, better than the other one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one that'll run this and one that won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the and you know in this this classroom they have laptops and it hooks up to a wireless network, but the laptops are growing out of date they're they're getting long in the tooth and you know the other lab the one in the library where the librarian got upset is good it's 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 adequate for for what they need and they can they can get in there and work on it okay from a teacher's perspective which is probably very different than any of y'all have ever thought of i think there might be one lady in here who might understand what i'm talking about uh, we were charged in the state of Tennessee last year to bring science, and that's what STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math into our curriculums and prove that we have done it with no money, which is about the way we normally get edicts that we've got to do. Uh, this was a godsend. The reason why, free! <gasps> oh, Lord, it's free. Uh, our school system has no money. Uh, we lost 15 teaching positions in the last two years. And I'm sure Georgia's having the same issues. Uh, right now, I'm the department head for 10 teachers. I have $55 in the account. I've told them they can't run copies. So everybody gets five fifty. They get $5.50. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Uh, we're Title I. I've already talked about that issue. I do like some really good things. It is user-friendly. The pictures make it easy. If we make a flub, we just go back and fix it. We've had people who come in and say, this is wrong, you need to fix it, and they'll work with us. I almost wanted, some of them I've said, I'm the teacher. We are trying desperately to fix this. Um, quick turnaround to see kids, and several of them would go during their lunch times to work on this, and I was third block, and they were supposed to come back to my class after lunch. I would have to walk down to the library. Fluffy, <sighs> come on. Miss Keith, I'm here. No, we gotta take role in the room and do some things before we come back. So it tells you how um, motivated they become in working at this. Yeah, these kids, these kids are pretty scattered. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, we, we all look back and go, well, it wasn't like that when we were in school, but, it, it, you know, ADHD, I guess, is, is, you know, the new term for the, for the kids, and they're, they're keeping them concentrating on one thing is, ugh, <laughs> painful. So my perspective, um, they could do it at home. Some of mine, the ones that are keep on going have got computers at home. Quads helped in grading. If I did not put it in quads or say you did a specific thing, grading would be a nightmare. Um, Self-motivating. Um, a lot of times I get kids who sit in the back go, yeah, this ain't real. Well, they can't say that now. Uh, matter of fact, I, I'm going to just tell all the people who were here at this conference looking at some of the things that they have done. Uh, I brought them in Wednesday and showed them this presentation via without some of the uh, pictures and told the next group, this is what you've got to meet and better. Okay? Uh, to tell you some things, we used some of our open street maps. My six kids and I wrote four grants. We got two of them using uh, open street maps as part of our premise in our grants. And so what are we going to do from here? <laughs> I was at a, uh, at, a, at a meeting with a client, and in walks another high school teacher from Hamilton County, and so I talked to her. So we're supposed to go meet with her um, and, and see, you know, about maybe doing this over at Brainerd High School, which is another, more likely is another Title I school. Well, they are a Title I school. Yes, sir. And uh, see if we can get them mapping. Uh, try to focus them a little bit, maybe narrow it down a hair. Uh, introduce them to the wiki. You know, they're used to seeing maps in. They know shops, things, you know. You can do more with a parking lot than just calling it a parking lot. You can put in the aisles. You can put in, you know, the meters. You can put in all sorts of things. Um, get, you know, there's different things. And roads. We, we, we hashed through the roads. Robert got a lot of roads done. There's still some roads that need getting done. Straightening out, fixing. There's some stuff that's wrong because it was all imported from Tiger. Uh, hopefully we'll get that done this year and Red Bank will be mostly complete and uh, hopefully uh, 
uh, you can navigate from one end to the other using OSM. And um, and what I want to do is actually work into a GIS project. You got the OSM, uh, the 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 login or editor extension for ArcGIS now. Start pulling this data in and start doing things with it. Uh, Red Bank has this uh, very horrendous problem where they decided a few years ago in order to overcome budget shortfalls they would put in red light cameras and immediately when we started this project every kid wanted to map the red light cameras yes. in Red Bank. Because <laughs> the teacher motivated them to yeah, the, the cameras The cameras are located in three positions within Red Bank and what you will notice and I don't think anybody's ever done this that in all three positions where the cameras are at all the businesses have shut down. Uh, patterns have changed, things have happened the Crystal Restaurant at the end of Red Bank, the cheapest place you could eat in Red Bank, shut down, uh, which should not have happened. I mean, it, you know, it's the cheapest place to eat. You don't you don't shut down the cheapest restaurant in in in, in, the, in the town, and it, it shut down. It's near a red light camera. So get these kids to start tagging abandoned buildings, start showing a pattern of how this stuff is affecting them. Put in the trees. Put in the Red Bank has a tremendous problem with water quality. Uh, when, when the county went essentially banning septic tanks, uh, Red Bank fought it and said, no, we will not. And so now you have a mix of sewer and septic. And the septic's all draining into Stringer's Creek. Uh, you can't touch Stringer's Creek without getting sick. And it, it's they're on TDEX list. So, you know, I think the kids can get in there and do some stuff and, and, and add some data to it and uh, get them to use walking papers more. Uh, you know, it's it's separate site. It would be awesome. We could now, you know, integrate that with OSM or something where we could just print it out, hand it to the kids because you know, keeping the kids from jumping around from one because they go to inappropriate sites. <laughs> yeah, they'll mm -hmm. tell them what you find if you Google walking oh. papers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so essentially. <laughs> That was dragging this into a kid's perspective, dragging it into a teaching perspective. I mean, all you guys know about OSM, I, there's, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know, but teaching, teachers, it's, it's, it's an interesting, it was an interesting experiment that continues now. So anybody any questions or angst or problems or, yes. yo. I just want to give a shout out to Red Bank and what you're doing because my mom went to this high school 47 years ago. <laughs> it's a little different, but middle school is actually the middle school now. Um, but I think what you're doing is great and it's um, awesome to see that it's in a not so PC way, um, an underprivileged school. Yeah. Um, and then just you guys were thinking about ideas and maybe focusing and I was wondering what you thought about addressing. Uh, the kids, uh, you mean addressing on their home or addressing every their neighborhood? Yeah, if it was their home and they knew the addresses of their neighbors, they put those in. Um, and we did some, remember I only gave them about three weeks, so in three weeks we got a lot done because yeah. uh, we went on to the next thing. Uh, one of the things I think I will be doing is actually showing the uh, Red Bank powers to be that these uh, I, let's just be honest, between me and my family, we got $200 worth of tickets for going through these red lights. That uh, I want them gone. I feel like I have paid for the pig they have at the annual barbecue. And um, if we see, if we can prove to them that businesses are leaving or going away because this, it, you know, that would be my kids proving it with what y'all came up with. Yeah, which is a pretty, you know, it's a pretty cool thing. You take the kids, you get them to doing something, you actually prove something real world out of this, and that would uh, actually be quite interesting to have the group of high school students essentially thumb their noses at the commission. Oh, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing I am going to spring off, I teach geology, so points of interest where my kids oh, yes. take uh, geologic information will be posted on there, and where we're taking samples in Stringers Creek for my kids to see, so... Um, those kind of things. I am a little concerned about this changeover and that's going on. You know, I'm a teacher with, with kids and uh, it would change for us term-wise as far as the name of the kids who'd be working on it. So that yeah. some of the things you talked about kind of, I was like, oops, <laughs> this may not be as easy as I yeah. thought. You know, hopefully the kids with, with email will keep checking their email because I sent, when the uh, MapQuest thing came out, I forwarded as many of those links as I could to the kids and said, by the way, your stuff will possibly be appearing in MapQuest soon. You know, your, your stuff's going to be seen. Don't stop. And some are still working. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah you, you definitely have a lot of really great lessons learned, and especially having more, more students kind of come in and start going into the wiki, which 
Yeah. It seems a bit of a kind of it's that dark forest over there. Go 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 wander through that. I mean, yeah. Good and bad. So so I wonder if you thought about you know essentially in the weekend carving out like an entry point for students to come into. I mean, there's an education one, but coming as a student and maybe even by you know um, K through five and, and then middle school or high school, kind of walk him through <coughs> the values why you're doing it, the things that are meaningful to them, and then yeah. also think for parents specifically too, because because otherwise for parents it's okay. What does my kid keep talking about this thing when I come in? Yeah. I'm sure they're going like they're, they, they're just going to like what's going on here and yeah. explaining. Actually, that would be good. I, okay. Actually, I didn't even thought about that. I know last week or, or it was earlier this week there was a, there was a little bit of some blurbs flying around on Talk US about you know how do you get college kids mapping and somebody had pointed out there was an educational post or something there in the wiki and actually that might be worthwhile just make a red bank I mean, red bank high school page. And on the sheet going home, like, so you want to find out more? Go here to read, yeah. read more about it specifically. Yeah, that's help a good idea. More schools help build that out would be great. I'm, I'm going to flip cool. the lights up for the benefit of the video. Oh. <laughs> 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 Everybody wake yes. up. Did you have any concern with uh, children revealing their home addresses and stuff? Uh, well, not really, since um, that information could be easily accessed anyway. Uh, the kids, the, the seven that I, I knew had no problems, uh, they did ask their neighbors and uh, they were told to ask their neighbors before they put their addresses in. I know that I did my own neighborhood, the one of the two times that I was there, uh, and did walk through and, and tell them what was going on. Matter of fact, my husband was very leery of this. Uh, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you putting us on the map? And um, A couple of kids were even naming, which I, we've been trying to take that off, but we're actually putting the names of their neighbors on the map, so, so we would find you know Bob and Bob and Melda, you know Thomas. Suddenly, in, in this neighborhood, they'd have there'd be one house with one point with their name on it, and I'd go back and take that you know <laughs> take the name off and just leave the address. As but, we said, we found it's like for every step we made forward. Occasionally, there were two steps back that we had to go back and fix. So, but to the guy who came up this idea, the kids love it except for the teacher in the pubs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, every, and every kid that lives in a brothel, every kid, that, <laughs> every kid that lives in a brothel, a pub, and an adult bookstore, but uh, there aren't those many, there aren't, actually there are none of those in Red Bank now. No, so they've all been taken up. They will reappear again this upcoming semester. So cool, thanks. Thank you.